Although Maya is mostly thought of as a 3D creation tool, it can create a variety of 2D effects simply by using the right shaders. In fact, combining 3D movement with these 2D shaders is often the easiest and quickest way to achieve and iterate on certain effects. In this movie, we'll use Maya 2016 Extension 2's MASH Toolkit to create a tunneling effect, which we'll then render in a flat shaded 2D style. This tutorial assumes you're familiar with the basics of Maya and MASH. If you're just getting started in either, see the Maya documentation or the Maya Learning Channel for help on both. This tunneling effect is essentially just a bunch of flat diamonds moving along a track towards the camera. We'll start by creating our base object using the pipe primitive. In the poly pipe settings, change subdivisions axis to 4. This reduces the pipe to four sides, creating our diamond. While you're at it, adjust radius to 1.5 and height to 0.125 to thin out the borders a bit. In the Transform tab, rotate it negative 90 degrees in Z, so that it stands up like so, and scale it by 2 in all directions to make it a bit bigger. Next, let's apply a material. Right-click the pipe and go to Assign New Material. We're going to apply a surface shader, whose default settings are specifically tailored to give us the flat look we want. All we need to do is choose a color. Now switch to face selection mode and select all the faces inside the diamond. Apply another surface shader to them and color it yellow. With our base object done, we can now create a mesh network from it. Since we'll be using a Maya renderer for output, let's use instances rather than repros. Now we have our basic mesh network. Next, we need to get them moving in a way to create a tunneling effect. There are two ways we could do this either by spinning a radial distribution or by having the pipes move along a curve. Since the curve method will give us more control over the final result, let's use that. Select the four view, then expand the front camera. We'll create a curve here to ensure that it's on the XY axis. Go to Create, Curve Tools, CV Curve Tool, then click four points so that they form a bend like so. Return to the Outliner Perspective view, select the Mesh Network, and add a curve node. Now middle drag the newly created curve into the Input Curves field. That changes the arrangement of the diamonds, but this doesn't look quite right. They're fanning out because our Distribute node is still telling the instances to spread out along the x-axis. Zero this field out to fix it. Return to the Curve node and increase the step value to 1. This spreads the instances evenly along the curve. Now if you scrub through the time slider, you can see them move along the curve over time. To test how the effect looks, we'll position a new camera to view it from within. Go to Panels, Perspective, New. This creates a new camera and adjusts the workspace to look through it. Position the camera to look down the inside of the tunnel. Make sure to turn on the resolution gate to see exactly what the renderer will frame. Then play the scene. That's not a bad start, but it doesn't quite match our final either. The diamonds are spaced too far apart and they're moving too fast. Additionally, the yellow borders could stand to be a little wider and the overall shape of the diamonds doesn't seem quite right. Luckily, since MASH generates all these effects procedurally, we can easily iterate on them. First select the original pipe object in the outliner and show it by pressing Shift H. We're going to make some geometry changes. Before we do though, let's make working a bit easier by displaying our ordinary perspective and final shot views side by side by going to Panels, Layouts, Two Panes side by side. Set the second panel to the default perspective view. Finally, open the outliner in a separate window so we can refer to that as well. First, select the MASH network and increase the number of points to 20. 
This helps fill in the gaps we were seeing before. While you're at it, go to the Curve tab and reduce the animation speed to 0.2 to slow the whole thing down. Next, in the regular perspective view, switch to edge selection mode and select all the inner pipe edges on the camera facing side of the geometry. Use the scale tool to scale them out a little bit. This will make the yellow border more visible, which you can watch in real time in the right pane. Once you have it looking the way you want, switch back to object mode and scale the entire pipe as a whole. Again, you can use the right pane as reference until you get the tunnel looking exactly as you like. You can also try playing with the camera settings to help with this by selecting the Perse 1 camera and opening the Perse Shape tab in the Attribute Editor. In particular, the angle of view and focal length attributes affect the virtual lens of the camera, widening or narrowing the camera's view. And finally, you can adjust the curve's control vertices to update the MASH network's curvature to really fine tune the effect. Once your effect looks good in the workspace, you're ready for rendering. First try rendering a single frame. Switch to the Hardware 2.0 renderer. Notice that we're missing a background color. Select the output camera and go to the Environment section of the Perse 1 Shape node. Change the background color to a very light blue. Now go to the Render Settings. Set the image format to PNG and the frame animation extension to name number extension in order to output multiple frames. Also set the frame range from 1 to 120. Finally, set the renderable camera to Perse 1. Now in the rendering menu set, go to Render, Batch Render. Because the Hardware 2.0 renderer is so lightweight, it should finish outputting rather quickly. Try viewing the output. The animation looks correct, but notice that the colors are a bit off. This is because our workspace view is color managed, which you can see if you expand either of the camera views and look in the panel toolbar. However, the hardware renderer doesn't apply any color management by default. We can apply the same color management setting to our render as our workspace by opening the render settings and turning on Apply Output Transfer to Renderer. Now try batch rendering again. This time the output matches our workspace scene. 